Hi. Um, so yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is John Rear, and I'm a senior insight manager at Kantar Media. Um, and for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, I'm going to be taking you through uh, the, the 10 key insights um, on from our TGI um, data that's looking at the, the topic that's really kind of preoccupying everyone in marketing and media at the moment. Um, and that really is kind of that backdrop um, underpinning all consumer strategies, um, both today and for the foreseeable future. Um, and that, of course, is the cost of living crisis. Um, the impact that that's having on consumers, but also um, what that means for brands in terms of this you know, rapidly changing um, consumer commercial landscape. Uh, but just a quick word on where the, the data that I'm presenting comes from today. So many of you, I'm sure, will be familiar with TGI data, either using it currently or may have done so in the past. Um, and TGI data really is the currency for uh, planning and selling uh, consumer audiences. Um, TGI covers all aspects of uh, consumer behaviours and characteristics um, and really allows you to sort of really target and focus on different consumer groups um, in the most efficient way. Uh, TGI covers um, it, allows, it covers lots of different kind of data points, so uh, thousands of points of, of usage around different products and brands. Um, it also includes uh, hundreds of usage points, um, uh, sort of attitudinal statements, um, what people do in their, in their sort of social time and leisure time, but also crucially um, that usage and engagement across hundreds of different media brands. Um, so we use an annual uh, robust 24,000 uh, person sample. Uh, and that's released on a monthly basis, which then allows us to look at some bespoke, topical, um, different uh, points of interest, like we are doing with this cost of living crisis, which was uh, in some data that we released earlier this year. So to delve into the data, just to set the scene, um, this is just looking over time at, at the question around the percent of adults who are finding it either difficult or very difficult um, to cope on their present levels of income. And you can see that since we started tracking this in 2006, um, we're now seeing the, the highest levels um, of people finding it very difficult. Last year, there was a lot going on with the start of the Ukraine conflict. Um, as we moved into the months following that, there was uh, supply chain issues as a result and, and the pressures on prices there. Uh, sentiment dropped back in summer when people were potentially going on holiday and feeling a bit better about life. Um, then we had the budget in September, um, the fuel uh, price uh, rises later in the year, and then as we move towards the colder months, the, the, the real concerns around uh, heating as well. So we're seeing that people are really very much in the depth of this crisis, and it's continued into this year. In a similar vein, we also looked at um, the percent of adults who feel that the economic outlook is, outlook is heavily affecting, affecting their actual purchasing behaviour. And that's now higher than we saw um, during the levels in the 2008 financial crisis. Um, so nearly half of people really feeling that their purchasing behaviour has, has fundamentally changed um, as, a part, as, as a result of those macroeconomic pressures. And just to highlight, this really isn't just a UK issue. So we're seeing with our uh, Western European neighbours, this is um, you know, uh, people that are really struggling with those inflationary pressures. We've seen that increase in GB on the left-hand side between 2021 and 2022. It's also the case in France where now over half of people are feeling that their actual purchasing behaviour has been changed as, as, a, as a result of the, the economy. Um, a big increase in Germany from a quarter of people up to 35%. Um, and fairly static in Spain, although that was already at a fairly high level, so nearly two-thirds of people saying that their interaction with goods and services has, has fundamentally changed as, as a part of those uh, macroeconomic pressures. And a slightly uh, concerning stat that we pulled from our global quick view uh, data, which looks at across 35 uh, countries worldwide, um, that growing engagement with credit facilities. Um, so the number of people that had taken out a credit card online in the last six months in 2021 was at 17%. That's now risen to 21% in 2023. So that increased um, leaning towards credit to be able to, for people to be able to mitigate against some of those pressures on their disposable income. And then as part of our monthly survey that we released earlier this year, uh, we looked at, we asked a question around what um, consumers were, what the top action plans were for trying to save money in the next six months. 
And it really came back that it was around that day-to-day -day spending. So 46% of people said that they were going to cut down on meals out, um, so those trips to restaurants, bars and clubs. Um, maybe seeing some of that out-of-home spend coming back into home um, in a similar trend that we saw during the pandemic. Um, so there's potentially an opportunity for brands that play to that at-home experience um, to capitalise there. 43% um, similarly said they were really going to focus in on essential spending. Uh, so cut out kind of those non-necessary purchases, maybe cutting back on some of those luxury items in life. Um, and 27% said they're going to cut back on large planned financial purchases. So things like buying a new car, uh, buying a new kitchen, uh, potentially going to put these purchases off until a later date or maybe just remove them altogether. And then at the other end of the spectrum, um, so around the similar question on where people are, are going to save money, we looked at the least likely things. So those things that people don't really want to cut back on even though they're feeling these pressures. Um, and one of the key things, so just one in five people were saying they're going to cut back on memberships and subscriptions, so maybe a membership to the gym, cinema, membership to the National Trust, um, and subscriptions that, you know, maybe something is being delivered on a regular basis to home, they still want that convenience factor uh, within their lives. A similar proportions are one in five saying they don't want to cut back on, uh, only one in five, sorry, are going to cut back on days out. So trips to museum exhibitions or local attractions. Uh, people still really want that kind of thing to look forward to in the diary that's you know, a form of escapism from everything um, that's kind of going on around them. And then another question we asked was around whether they, people were going to start using online streaming services to watch films in place of um, expensive cinema tickets. And that certainly wasn't the case, so just one in ten said that they were going to use that as a kind of mechanism to save on money. Um, so people still really want that kind of experiential uh, thing in their lives, going to the cinema is kind of a good value for money and getting something uh, to look forward to. Um, and just to point out again around SVOD, again this is from our Global Quick View survey and it was just to highlight that we're leading the way really in terms of our interaction with SVOD. Um, so the question was, if an unexpected expense occurred, which of the following would you prioritise if you could only select one? And you can see that we're leading the way with uh, us being two and a half times as likely to really protect that spend on online subscription services like Netflix and Amazon Prime. So something that people in, in GB really aren't willing to cut back on. Um, and then in the next few slides, I'm just going to um, talk through some different consumer groups just to show that really not everyone is acting in the same way and responding in the same way um, as a part of this crisis. So the first group looks at play school parents and it looks at um, the most important factors um, when deciding which foods, products and brands to buy. Um, play school parents, you know, with uh, people with young families, as you'd expect with the financial pressures that come with having a young family, their rating price is the most important factor that they're thinking about when making purchases. And that's risen from the start of uh, 2022 from 79% up to 88% at, at the end of the year. However, when we look at a different group, uh, senior sole decision makers, so older people potentially living on their own, it's actually sales promotions that their uh, rating is the most important factor. So looking for those bargains and, and those things on deal has risen from 18% up to 31% towards the end of last year. At the other end of the, the age spectrum, so the uh, flow in the nest group, so there's younger people who are really sort of heavily engaged with takeaway and fast food. Getting that delivered once uh, a month or more is no longer something that's necessarily feasible in terms of their disposable income. So really cutting back on that from 59% at the start of the year down to less than a half um, towards the end of last year. So that quick impulsive burger, uh, a treat of a pizza is just something that they, they're factoring out of their lives um, in, in bigger proportions. And then the final group, hotel parents, so those older people with um, uh, children still living at home, um, it's actually quality that their rating is the most important factor and using as a mechanism potentially to, to mitigate against some of those pressures that they're feeling. So that you know, £20 nice bottle of red on a Friday night is potentially moving down the, the quality scale and they'll be getting a, a cheaper option um, as they try to uh, balance um, their budgets. At this point, though, I think it's probably important to say that not everything is being compromised to cost. So ethics and sustainability is still seeing really strong levels of robustness. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see um, the statement around it's important that a company acts ethically. It has remained consistent between the start of last year and the end of last year. Similarly, 
people saying that they like to buy products from companies that give something back to society, again, has remained consistent um, throughout the year. And on the right-hand side, you can see that 72% are saying that during this financial crisis, um, a brand should be uh, sustainable and socially responsible without charging a premium. So they really feel that brands should be absorbing some of that cost themselves rather than passing that on to the consumer. And these principles are, are being backed up by actions. We saw that the same proportion of adults claim to use eco washing up liquid and pucker tea today as, as they did in March last year. So really um, supporting what they're, what they're saying. And that relationship between consumers and brands is really coming out as quite a strong theme. So nearly three quarters of people are, are saying that brands and companies should reduce their profit margin um, to keep consistent prices during times of inflation. So consumers really are looking to brands to help them, um, help them support them and navigate them through this crisis. A similar proportion say that brands should do more to support local communities in times of hardship. And as I said previously, sustainable and, and socially responsible um, Intrinsic, intrinsically built within to um, products without charging a premium is really key. There's also a theme around loyalty. So 68% um, of people said that a brand should reward me for my loyalty during this financial crisis. So people have maybe been supporting a brand you know, over the longer term, but also are carrying on buying into them during the crisis. Feel that now that loyalty should be paid back to them um, and, the, and the loyalty be really being rewarded. 57% uh, say they prefer to support local brands and businesses when times are hard, so keeping that spend um, close to home. And then 55% of people said that brands aren't doing enough to keep their, their customers either. So there's this real look of consumers towards brands to, to help navigate uh, through these, these challenging times. And then again, as part of our uh, monthly topic survey, we looked at, uh, we asked people around what the most popular sources of financial and cost saving information are. Um, to help through this cost of living crisis. And there's a real trend of familiarity and trust coming through. So 38% of people saying that friends, families, uh, family, friends and neighbours is where they're going to be turning to to get advice. Similar proportion um, saying specialist websites like Money Saving Expert. Um, and when you think about the language that's been used by Martin Lewis and, and on the Money Saving Expert website, it's very much about being on the side of the individual and helping consumers uh, through this. So. Again, people looking towards that trust element. And again, that's backed up by the stat that you can see on the right-hand side with just 17% of people uh, turning to financial institutions, which when you think about um, these are the people that are actually looking after our money, that people aren't turning to them, just shows the, the level of erosion of trust since the last uh, crisis in 2008. From a traditional um, media perspective, 27% people, uh, of people are turning to TV. Um, and just 17% um, are turning to social media. So again, possibly showing some of that um, level of where they, where they want to turn to and, and uh, trust element and which sources they can trust. So in summary, um, the cost of living crisis uh, impact on consumers obviously is huge. Um, and people are, are reacting and coping very differently. Um, and that's because not all consumers are being impacted equally. Um, Price, as it has potentially been traditionally, is not always powerful. Um, people are using different mechanisms to cope through this, so brands need to have more of a, a, a tailored approach. Um, people are also looking for sources of trust to help guide them. Um, and brands, where possible to do so, should really focus on supporting on cost um, and communicate about that as well, and communicate about any uh, points around sustainability, ethical, social responsibility, uh, and local to win with uh, consumers. And that's existing customers as well as trying to attract new spend uh, with new, new uh, customers as well. So in terms of how we can uh, support you further, um, just to um, really sort of say that we're, we're here to help. So TGI's breadth and depth of data really is unrivaled um, in terms of the, uh, the sort of the answers it can give you in terms of co consumer audience insights. Uh, we have a variety of different solutions um, that we can offer to you that um, will, you know, find you the right insight for the right consumer groups. And um, we also have a team of in-house experts who can uh, provide a tailored solution to you depending on what your needs are, whether it's around, you know, including a question into the survey or whether it's um, integrating first-party data sets. Um, and I think it's probably fair to say that um, 
consumer behaviour really isn't static at the best of times, but as we're navigating through this crisis, is, consumer behaviour really never has been changing as rapidly as it is now. Um, so it's never been more important to understand that fragmented, um, fragmented group and build consumer strategies around that. Um, and we're to help support you through that, through that journey over the next months and years. Um, so that's everything from me. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll put my contact details up on screen um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions after, um, after the session. Thanks very much. Thank you, John.